Hey there, fellows. Today I've got myself this here Red Lotta. It's a wonderful car. At the very least, it looks really good, considering how old it is. So here's what I have in mind. So you've got all these commercials, right? Where they advertise different sorts of oil additives, which allegedly either keep your engine working quietly, or, for example, help your gearbox to shift so smoothly that you wouldn't feel any sort of notchiness. These are the sorts of products which help increase longevity. But what if we were to take a simple bone stock lotta? remove its factory gearbox, drain all of the oil, thoroughly clean it, so that there's no oil film left in there, and try driving around on a completely dry gearbox, just to see how reliable these cars really are. Now, you've witnessed a bunch of times how hard it is to kill a lot of motor. Though admittedly, a long time ago, I've been in situations where I wasn't necessarily trying to destroy the engine, but it happened anyway. For whatever reason, a bearing would stick, a piston ring would break, or whatever else. It could have been that I screwed up myself at some point, of course. That said, I'm curious to try experimenting with the gearbox. See how durable it is. All right, let's drain it, wash it, and go do some hard track driving. Let's do this. How far can you drive with no gearbox oil? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so here's what's up. You would have seen us washing the gearbox. We took a bottle, what do you call that thing? The squirter you use to apply rust-proofing compounds. Anyway, so we filled that thing with some cleaner to wash the oil residue from inside the gearbox. We did what we could without resorting to dropping the box itself, so it stayed attached, we cleaned it up, and here we are at the test track, preparing to go for a drive. Right, we need to hook up a race logic to measure distance. See how far it goes. Let's get to it. It's displaying the odometer. We are ready. Let's go. It's making some nasty noises. Oh wow, what's with the clutch in this thing? Does it even have one? Let's do this. Okay, so the speedo is working. That's nice. What's not nice is that we can't get up to high speed. That'll hurt the engine. Hopefully we don't overheat. We should keep the thing under load in order to put some heat into the gearbox. To get some friction going. Avoid any puddles to keep it from cooling down. You know what that's called, don't you? Uncontrollable oversteer. Good stuff. We've got some serious understeer. Five thousand six hundred meters so far. I reckon we should fill the tires with a bit more air. I think that'd be a good idea. I should really open the windows. I have driven 7,100 meters. Where do you see steam coming from? I've got the heater on, so the engine shouldn't be running too hot. Oh, it's coming from the box. You can take it from here. I guess we should. It hasn't developed any noises, though. It is super hot down there. Okay, fellas, we're conducting this test in 24 hours of Le Mans fashion. After driving 7 to 10 kilometers, we wipe off the camera lens, and the next driver starts his shift. Go!
What? What's up? It seems to be making a new noise. Yeah. Yeah, but you... It has developed a whining noise. It's developed a whine. Really? Yep. You can really hear it from the outside. The gearbox is making a whining sound. Yeah, we saw how you drive. It's not overheating, is it? I occasionally cool it down. We noticed that too. Alright, it's my turn. Let's carry on. So far we've traveled 23 kilometers, and not even a hint of... Then again, the gearbox is actually making some kind of unusual sound. Though I wouldn't say it's that intrusive. It is very hot inside the car. Due to everything in here being so hot. But no worries, we can handle it. Alright, what do we got? 35,800. And it doesn't seem to mind. Time to pass on the torch. What just happened? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. That must be the input shaft sticking in place. What are you talking about? It's stuck. Really? The car began to shudder, I'm telling you. Oh wow, you're actually right. I did hear some sort of... Right starting it. <laughs> Looks like it ain't stuck yet. I didn't. 35,800 and it's dead. See what it's doing? Why don't you try turning it over in neutral? I dare you. Maybe try some gas? Go for it. Maybe it'll even drive. Yeah, sure. And he's off. Aha. It unstuck itself. Oh my god, those noises. Let's finish the job. Put that away, Slav. Something in there is completely fried. Oh, now you can really hear it. The gears aren't going in. What was that? Okay. Fourth won't go in. For God's sake. It won't go into any gear. Wait, I've got first. And second. I've even convinced third to engage. Alright, let's pick up some speed. One more lap. And I should probably take a break. And check the result. You saw before that it began to stick. Push the clutch in. I already have. And now it's neutral. Let me just see... The transmission tunnel is hot. First and second go in with a crunch. I barely got it into third. Let's see what happened since the last time. That's second. It won't give me anything aside from third and neutral. I drop the clutch. I let the clutch go. If I let it go in neutral... Oi! Oi! 
Eh? Is it in neutral? I'm moving in neutral. I've got reverse. Okay, it stopped doing that. I must have broken it in. It's scooting nicely in reverse. Something got unstuck. Now we can confidently drive in reverse. After a bit of clunking, now it's fine. It's trying to get away from me. Something in there is snagging. It's holding up after 42 kilometers. Come on now. Right. What have we got? 42.5. Everything is grinding, ringing, but the car does move. We haven't even tried yet. What was that noise? That's it? I think we're done. At 43 kilometers. I don't know what happened. Maybe that was the shaft snapping? Honestly, I have no clue what that was. What's going on down there? Does anybody know? Let's try once more in neutral. That's neutral? It moves in neutral. Not bad. It's actually moving forward in neutral. I'm afraid to even press the gas. That's some loud-ass clunking. In any case, guys, it was able to drive 43 kilometers. I don't think it has any more in it. It has reached its limit. Give it some gas and now it's fine. What if I don't press the gas? It's about the same. After I got the revs up, it tried to move forward. At the end of the day, it was able to travel 43 kilometers. Very nice. Alright, fellas, we couldn't help ourselves and we decided to get the car up on a lift. I'm examining the box. It's just that I'm really curious as to what happened in there. So when you release the clutch in neutral, the car attempts to move. At a quick glance, I don't see anything horribly wrong in there. But you can tell that the gears have a sort of bluish hue. That's a clear indicator of overheating. I mean, the gearbox was lacking transmission fluid, so... But what else is going on in there? We don't know. So let's remove the box and figure it out. There's only so much you can see from down here. Right, let's drop it, take it apart, and have a look. Ah, 
Okay, so it's off. I flipped it so that we can take a close look at what's inside. This is shaping out to be quite interesting, actually. The gears... So apparently this here is first, second... And they're both blue. I'm not sure if you guys can really see it on your screens. But they got so hot that the metal actually became darker. It's got a dark blue hue to it. I'm not gonna make any guesses, but the temperature was definitely up there. We didn't take any precise measurements, though. The dog clutch... I'm guessing it's either a dog clutch or one of the internal bearings. Either one of those got fused. The box is currently in neutral, and look what happens when I move the input shaft. First off, you've got that noise. There's no oil in there, so... Second of all, here you are rotating the entire assembly, just spinning it back and forth. Wait for it, and here is where it gets stuck. It begins to transfer torque via the output shaft, and the tail end also begins to rotate. That's probably what caused that effect when we were releasing the clutch in neutral. When the car began to move forward while making a horrendous grinding noise. As if... I wouldn't say it's like an auto box in that sense, since you still need to use the clutch. The point is that the car moves as soon as you get some torque transfer happening. And that was going on in neutral, mind you. But 43 kilometers under such stress... That's actually pretty commendable. If I can reiterate... It appears that if you take a modern car with a manual transmission, and if you were to drain the oil and not even clean out the box like we did, I take it not every modern gearbox would be able to achieve such results. You saw how much punishment we were putting it through? We had nothing held back. And here's another thing that went wrong. You see, the synchronizers appear to be... Either they're completely worn down, or I don't even know. Now it won't go into any gear because the synchros aren't on straight. And they're not allowing for proper gear engagement. Okay, this gearbox is a goner. But oh well, no tragedy in that. We've got a few spares lying around. More than a few, actually. So if the oil flees the gearbox as a result of you destroying the oil pan or something, you can definitely go for 40 more kilometers. And if you take it easy and don't beat the gearbox up like we did, you might even manage 140. Right? I'm sure it can take it. 40 kilometers under such incredible stress. And that wasn't even enough for it to fall apart. We were expecting something to get jammed, for a shaft to snap, which is something I've had happen to me on the road. But here everything held up. We're looking good. If the oil had evacuated and left a film, yeah, this would have taken quite a long time. I reckon we would have needed more than a day to make this work. We might have been at it for a few days before something like this happened. Anyway, fellas, you saw it all for yourselves, and that's all I have for you. We're looking at a 107% success rate here. It's all good. You guys watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.